Hello everybody, and today we're going to talk about all the fucking movies I made, one movie at a time. Take it one movie at a time. Alright, whatever, that was awful. Since the uh, publication, or me starting to put out um, Horrywood, the Confessions of a Low Budget Filmmaker or whatever, a lot of, I am going to say a lot, I will say a handful of people have been asking me questions about filmmaking and the movies that I've made and why some of them it seems like are available to watch but they're not available to watch and like where can you watch my shit and all this other stuff so because of this um what i want to do is talk to you guys kind of about each feature that i made and kind of go into the ins and outs because honestly you can read textbooks on how to do shit. You can go to school on how to do shit. But the only way you actually learn how to do shit is if people throw you in the fucking ocean with sharks. Okay? So the only way you can learn how to be a proctologist is if a shark is chasing you, according to me right now. Okay? So that's fucking stupid. But anyway. So the first feature I made was a little gem called uh, Creep Creeperson's Frankenstein. So, I'm going to give you a quick backstory, and a lot of you have heard this before, so I'm going to try to just jam through it here. I had a record label back in the day called Creepsville Entertainment, and we did, like, we put people's records out, we helped put their tours together, um, and all this other shit. And when we got, when Creepsville Entertainment was growing... We ended up with a bigger distribution deal, which would get the CDs of everything in stores and stuff all over the country and shit. And that distributor we were working with also, and mainly, distributed films. And they were mainly, like, low-budget horror movies, but nonetheless, it was a distributor. So, we made a deal with them, and as we were working on this deal something came up to where one of the movies that they were putting out i can't remember the exact reason behind it but they had a soundtrack but they didn't have rights to any of the music so now that this distributor had a deal with a record label they asked me to put the songs together for this movie. So I did that. And during this time too, I was starting to direct music videos for the bands on the label. And again, doing that was an accident. I started directing because we needed videos for the bands on the label. And since I'm the fucking, like, go-getter guy, I'm like, okay, we're making a video, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this, let's do that, we'll cut every three seconds to this, that, or the other thing, it's fine, let's go. And suddenly, I'm a director, I'm directing things. So then, the distributor wanted to do more crossover stuff, wanted to see if any of the people in the bands on the label were good enough to act, like if they could like be in front of the camera and do the fucking thing. So that's how that part of the conversation started. And then they just said to me, like, why don't you just make a feature and we'll put it out? Can you do this? And I'm like, I guess, what do I have to do? And they're like, we'll just make a movie, like make a movie. Um, it, it needs to be like 70 minutes long, at least, you know, it would be great if you could do something that had, kind of like a built-in fan base already that would be really helpful and that line right there was the thing that just like got me going because like I had no idea what the fuck to do when this dude was talking to me about this so again during this time I was trying to get bloodless romance made like picked up by a big studio and all the shit and make a big budget horror movie but I thought this would be a fun thing to do in the in my spare time while that was going on so the built-in fan base part really struck me so that's when i'm like oh i'll do a frankenstein movie frankenstein the word is public domain i could just make a frankenstein movie um that's cool but then i'm like okay i don't have any money um i have 
like no money at all to make this movie. So um, let's not have like the monster and all this shit. It's called Frankenstein. And at the time, I think, I think I had just watched the movie Willard with Crispin Glover in it. And so I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just have a rat named Frankenstein. And then there's a rat in the movie, and that's cool. And the rat's name's Frankenstein. So that was how the movie originally like started coming together in my head. And then I wrote the script that weekend. And before I started writing, I s- called up all my friends that were local to me, because I was in Oregon at the time. And I'm like, can I shoot at your place? Like, like, do you have any like cool things that would look good on camera? And, um, one of my friends out there lived in this kind of farmhouse on a shit ton of property. Um, and there was a lake out past the property a ways. And um, we were shooting in November in Oregon. So, like, leaves all over the ground, fog all the time, rain all the time. It, like, could not have looked any fucking creepier, okay? And it was gorgeous. And this was back in the SD days, like, standard definition, like, DV, mini DV cameras. This was before HD. This was before... Um, 2K and 4K and the whole fucking thing. So I'm like, okay. So I had my script. It was like, I think it was like 64 pages. And um, I should probably do a video on how I wrote scripts because the way I wrote scripts was not at all how anyone should ever write a script probably. But, um, and then I like went to some of the bands that were on the label who were local. And I'm like, can you be in this movie? Most of them agreed, and they were the stars of the movie. Um, the woman whose house it was, she was going to be in the movie. And then the the dude who played the main part, Victor, he was the guy who auditioned for Bloodlust Romance that, like, knocked me out. Like, he was so creepy and method and the whole fucking thing. Um, I think his name was James Porter. And um, he was just a fucking character. And um, he was so into the fucking movie. He was so into the script. He was like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, tear this up. So he was all excited. And so we decided that we would get this movie shot over a weekend at um, my friend's house. And so we... I had, like, the only way you could shoot a feature that quickly is if you know what every shot's going to look like before you start shooting and like do you have to storyboard if you want to to me that just like takes up weeks of time i just knew what every shot was going to be so how my script was set up it was set up in bullet points to where like each bullet point was a shot like everything on it was a shot And then you would have the dialogue and shit, too. So we make the movie. It goes off basically without a hitch. The only thing I had to spend money on was I had to buy a rat and get a cage. And that, I think, um, I think it was like 12 bucks altogether what I had to buy. Um, And that was all it cost. And everyone else who worked on it, um, I had some people from um, University of Oregon Film Department who just wanted to work on a feature that had fucking distribution lined up, they were just excited to work on it. So they worked on it for free. And, um, you know, we did the movie. And then we started editing the movie. And the editing of this was very tricky because, believe it or not, are you ready for this? A bunch of people who have never acted before, you could kind of tell. Um, so... I had to come up with a lot of really inventive things really quickly Um, and had to really argue 
with the people from UFO who were editing the movie because they were afraid this was going to make the movie look really shit. So what are, what are, what am I talking about here? Well, one of the things that Victor does in the movie is he's a shut in and he just sits with his rat Frankenstein and watches old public domain movies on the TV all night and he eats eggs and he brushes his teeth and that's the extent of this dude's life okay he's fucking weird so um i had a lot of cutaways to public domain films so that was cool it like gave stuff and i would have stuff that were happening in the movie be happening to him at the same time so those were easy cut back and forth and he was great like he acted phenomenal phenomenally but some of the other characters were shit. So one of the characters I decided would be a silent movie person. So every time they walked on camera, like there was like this weird like um, sepia tone box around them and they would go. And then like a title card would show up where they were standing saying the dialogue. OK, and this would make sense to him. All right. So that's fine. Then another character, um, the character, like the landlord of the house he lived in, um, her lines were kind of bad. So I just started playing them backwards. Um, and it worked because when he was talking, he would always repeat what she said anyway. So, like, she would go, and then he would go, I'm not weird. What do you mean? And like, just whatever. So, and that worked. Okay. So all of these things ended up being like, looking like stylistic choices, but it just made it to where the movie didn't horribly suck. And then, um, one person, I, um, slowed their like dialogue down. So they sounded like this and shit like that. Um, then uh, there was supposed to be this big special effect thing that we were doing the screen screen thing for that just ended up not working. So then for that, instead of like trying to put something on and having it look really shitty, we just had this disembodied voice that Victor would hear every once in a while. And then um, Creeperson, the band um, I was in, did the music for it and that was great and um then at the very end of the movie the thing that we were supposed to do was he was supposed to go to the lake and walk this body like hold this body walk it out into the lake and then push it into the lake and then like cry into the lake and i wanted to do this whole like um like the virgin spring like the wailing at the end kind of thing. And um, it was cold as fuck. And it was like six in the morning and the lake was kind of far away. Like to move the entire camp over seemed like it was going to be kind of difficult. And then it started raining really hard. And I was like looking around and I'm like, this sucks. What are you going to fucking do? And so then I saw in the field next door, there was this old porcelain bathtub in the field and I like me not being a farm boy had no idea that people used bathtubs if they had an extra bathtub around for the horses and shit to like feed them and like whatever. So I just see a porcelain bathtub in the middle of a field and I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to have him just put her in there and bury her with all these dead leaves. And then he could like run off and do the whole virgin spring thing. And the ending of that movie, I think, is fucking fantastic. I think it's amazing. Um, so it worked out really, really well. Um, we shot it in, like, two and a half days. And then editing took... Um, editing took about four months. Not working every day, obviously. But, like, that's about how long it's... No, actually, that's not true. Two months. Because I was back in Southern California um, before my birthday. So... Um, but the thing about it is, is that the reason why it took so long is because I had no 
real credits under my belt. And I was like forcing these people to do something that they didn't want to do. Like all the shit I just said in post to try to fix the movie. And then at the end of the day, they're like, no, this is actually really cool. And if we hadn't have done this, I don't know if this movie would have even been watchable. So it ended up really, really cool. And it ended up being the biggest selling DVD release I had that I had put out myself um, through different distribution. Because, like, long story short, what ended up happening with the original distribution company, we had a falling out. And so we ended up not doing it. And then I pulled Creepsville Entertainment from them and went with this other company. And um, the funny thing is, is that what ended up happening right after that is that my um, next movie... Or actually, it was the first movie of mine that actually had a DVD release. They're the ones who put that one out. But um, we couldn't come to terms on the Frankenstein one, which is hysterical. And then I ended up putting Frankenstein out through my company, through a different distributor um, a few years later. Wow, crazy story, right? Um, So anyway, so that was my first movie. And um, I don't know if that was enlightening or taught you anything if this was interesting let me know down below and i will do more videos like this because i made a lot of movies so i could go on like this forever so um let me know type hard and i will talk to you all later i just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew or the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you